Welcome back to the watch list. I'm Alex Coffey in for Nicole Petalini. And now I'd like to bring in our next guest. We've got Michelle Snyder, Director of Trading Education and Research at MarketGauge.com joining us. First off, thanks for joining us here today, Michelle. Uh, and let's just jump right into it. How does one look at investing in what I would say is somewhat of an understatement, but uh, let's call it a volatile market? <laughs> yes. Well, actually, this has been a really interesting year for doing things that many people find so distasteful, but it's the only way to make money, and that is to go short, actually. Um, and you can do that these days by buying inverted ETFs on the indices in many of the sectors. So it's, it's, it's just so anti-everything to how people want to feel and believe because it's betting against the country, it's betting against the stock market. But if you want to do more of a short-term type of investment, and when I say short-term, really, we started this unraveling in April. Mm -hmm. At this point, you already would have had good money. But since we're sitting right now on the precipice of some major support that either holds or it doesn't, the likelihood of another leg down means that you might be able to make some money over the next couple of months being short. Now, with that said, if that's distasteful, the old cash is king is really not such a bad place to be. But we do have a shopping list, of course, Alex, and everything will depend on certain conditions, but we can certainly talk about some of those stocks. Yeah, and I think that that's just the, the way that we have to kind of interpret this is, is going to come down to how we were, were sitting coming into it, uh, how we feel about the positions that maybe exist within portfolios. And, you know, sometimes uh, hedging activity uh, like you're talking about, using some of those uh, alternative products can help uh, at least lift up some peace of mind. There's a lot of reasons why someone may uh, utilize some of those products. But let's talk about some of the names that, that uh, you have your eye on here, uh, Michelle. And, you know, the first one that sticks out to me and uh, we'll kind of go through these, uh, you know, one by one, uh, is Palantir. Because if we, if we start here with, with Palantir, it's this sort of ominous company in its own right and the, some of the stuff that it's doing, but it seems so unique. Is, is that kind of why it's on your list, is its unique nature? Like, who's competing with Palantir? Well, the reason why it's on our list is for a couple of reasons. One is they just renewed a government contract, so they are somewhat defensive. Uh, mm -hmm. When I say defensive. I don't mean a defensive play, but they're involved with defense within the government. And some of the outperformers have been companies like Northrum and uh, General Dynamics and things like that. So it, it really interests us because it got to a price level and with the hearing that they've renewed their contract. At this point, really, you're all about risk. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of how you have to approach everything. And I don't want to forget to end the segment without talking a little bit about commodities because... I have some insights there as well for investment. But anyway, getting back to Palantir, mm. it's like with everything here, what's going to survive a major another a round of liquidation? And clearly this could also break down, but what I like about it is actually is well outperforming today. As long as it continues to hold, let's say about seven and a half, mm -hmm. I think it has potential. And if we get any kind of movement up in the market, this could actually take a nice little trip maybe up to nine or ten. You know, we're not talking long-term holding here. We're really trying to trade things that are showing us risk-reward might make sense. And believe me, when we see the market turning down, we are very quick to take those profits if we have them off the table and hold a tail. No, I love it. It's a pot odds conversation, and sometimes that's the opportunity that we see, especially when things are moving around uh, kind of and whipping the way that they have been. Uh, we'll get to some of the commodity insights, particularly the metals here in a second, but I'll talk about the energy alternative space because you've got a couple names that stick out. I think they, they somewhat, uh, of course, are different, but they, they kind of are, are following into the same space, which is, uh, first off, Rivian, kind of the new player uh, within the EV space that's caught a lot of, uh, of, of kind of uh, media headlines, of course. And then you've got Cameco as well, the uranium mine, that one stuck out to me for sure. Uh, uh, which one do you want to talk here first here, either one or, or both here, Michelle? Well, let's talk about Rivian because it's, it's sexy in a sense. Where Tesla is still trading above, or at least it was earlier, above $250 a share. This is trading at $32 a share. And yet, looking deep into the company, they have a couple of really interesting things going for it. It's a nice design. It's more competitively priced. 
It's actually starting to get some deliveries. I'm actually seeing Rivians around where we live in Santa Fe. I've talked to a few people who have the SUV on order, won't be ready for about a year. So it's also got these new service trucks that are all around that you basically, if you have any kind of servicing needs, they're very fully equipped and they also are electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a company to look at. The all time low in the stock has been 19, 1925 actually, and it's trading at 32. So I think right now we have to look at levels. If We're out of it, we're flat. We were in it, we made some money, we get out. I mean, you know, we're active. But $30 right now, especially as this market tests these major support levels overall, if that can hold, that might bring us back into it, because I can see this as a $40, $50 stock, at least in the near term, until the whole economic picture changes. As far as Cameco, it's uranium. There's talk about using uranium nuclear energy as an alternative energy. It's just talk. But still, even that right now is outperforming the market. So we're just looking for things to look at if mm -hmm. like a day like yesterday has more than a one day follow through and we can see some, some buying coming in. Yeah, Cameco has been a little volatile, no doubt about it, throughout the year, oh. spiking with headlines, particularly around some of the commodity prices within the energy space, but consistent outperformer all year long, up over you know 10% on the year. So definitely one uh, that's been interesting to keep a focus on. I know you got some thoughts on the metal space as well. You got a gold miner on your list, and as well as just silver in general. Silver not getting the love that, that gold gets uh, when we talk metals. Well, there's a reason why, I, again, to me, this fits into the macro. So what's happening right here? I mean, basically what happened in the Bank of England, it got to the point where it's reducing, it's buying bounds and doing QE in an inflationary environment. And the numbers that came out of Germany today just showed even higher inflation. So if we bring that to the U.S., and we also look at the fact that at some point, with food prices continuing to go up, and even if oil prices stabilize, they're still high, and the energy crisis continues, or the geopolitical situation worsens, or social unrest increases beyond what it already is globally and comes to the U.S. in any form, these metals will definitely react. They're cheap. Silver right now is still outperforming gold a little bit. That doesn't sound all that great. But you also got to keep your eye on the miners, which is where that KGC comes in. It's a Canadian gold miner. Because these things look like they're holding. Again, I'd wait. But if you start to see that things are unraveling, credibility of the Fed is starting to go by the wayside. The Fed has to pivot at some point, even though we don't think they're going to do it anytime soon. Because they're driving us into deep recession. Or there's any kind of unrest that really starts to impact people where they're fighting over the ability to buy food, that's when the metals shine. They love to shine in the worst situation. And I know that sounds depressing, but we're investors, so we try to look for these opportunities to make money. Yeah, no doubt about that, particularly uh, within the miners, too, kind of a high beta play on those metals as well, uh, and some of them a little bit cheaper priced than, let's say, the metal themselves. But, Michelle, we got to leave it there. Michelle Schneider, thanks for joining us. To